Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Got the table loaded up here with supplies. I had an idea in my head of what I was going to do, and then all these other ideas popped in my head, and I'm now I'm just going, uh, I don't know what to do. So, I kind of figured, let's just hit record and do some things together. I want to do some Coco Dama. I'm going to uh, do this in a smaller form. That's why I have these little Syngoniums up here. These are the Super Dwarf Pixies on each side of this pink one in the center. And I believe that the pink one in the center is the Neon Robusta. There are tons of videos out there on Coco Dama and how to do it. I'm just going to kind of dig in here. I've done it a few times before and I really did enjoy it, but I have found that they are not the most practical things to have around. They're not as easy to take care of as a lot of nurseries and places will claim that they are. And with the whole Terrarium Tuesday thing going on, I thought, you know what? Let's do some Cocodema, some small ones, and put them in glass and see how those do. It's just kind of an experiment. I have my jute twine right there. That's what I'm going to use to wrap the balls. I may switch to a clear line. I haven't decided yet. And I also have some of this preserved sheet moss back here. It's from Super Moss. It's not live, so it's it's not going to die or anything like that, but it also still looks pretty fake, which isn't always fantastic. And then I have a soil blend here. This is where things get a little bit tricky. So with Cocodema, you typically want a soil mix that when you mix it with water, it's going to have a lot of hold to it. And the soil that I have on hand, um, I don't see that happening. It is dry right now, but I still, I have this soil prepared and purchased with the intent of it being something that has really sharp drainage and is nice and fluffy for use in terrariums. So I don't know. There's only one way to find out. I'm just going to add some water to this, let it soak, and then give it a squeeze and see what happens. I don't really mind getting dirty, but with the camera and everything, I prefer to just be able to pull these off if I need to make adjustments. This mix right here is Repti soil. It has some fine bark in it. And then I added some Cocoa Bop from the uh, Happy frog people. All really good mediums for a terrarium. Not necessarily for Cocodemo. I added the Cocoa Bop in there thinking that it might have a little bit more hold to it, but I don't know. It's pretty gritty. So if it doesn't have any hold, then I'll probably, I'll just do this with like some miracle Grow or something. Typically with Cocodema, it's suggested to use a bonsai mix. And that is kind of a confusing thing to say sometimes because there are multiple types of bonsai soil. It doesn't necessarily matter though. The principle behind bonsai soil is that it has nice sharp drainage. That's pretty much what it goes for. Sharp drainage, lots of air can get in around the roots for those bonsai plants, and that's essentially what I have here. But uh, like I said, I don't know. I'm gonna need to give this a while to soak. I may just go ahead and add in some other mixes. We'll get back to that in a little bit. It needs some time. It's got coconut in it, and coconut takes a while to hydrate. And I also don't want to forget that I need to hydrate this sheet moss also. Preserved sheet moss. Probably should have grabbed a larger bowl, shouldn't I? Push that down a little bit so that it can soak up that water. Like I said, probably should have grabbed a bigger bowl. There's only so much space here on the desk. I know this may not seem like very much, but the ones I'm going to be making are going in glass apothecary jars. So these have to be fairly small to fit. So I really shouldn't need a ton of it, but I don't know. We'll find out together. And then over here, this is just kind of something to talk about. This is all live moss that I've taken from my own yard. I really like how Cocodemas look when people use live moss. The thing is, live moss is a lot harder to keep going, especially when it's wrapped around in a ball and it doesn't have a flat, moist surface to keep it hydrated, essentially. You know, moss grows across a surface and moisture arises from there. When it's in a ball, there's air moving all the way around it. And uh, this particular moss, I don't know what it's called. I'm not like a moss guru or anything like that. Like I can identify like some sphagnum moss and stuff like that. But this is essentially what I have to work with here. And it is a nice big sheet, but it also like comes apart fairly easily. I'm just not sure that this would have the hold that I would want for a Coco de Mo. That and then as this starts growing, it's a little bit pale right now because it's been cold and then it warmed up and then it came inside. So there's some transitioning happening with it. But usually just within days of getting this into a terrarium, it does start to grow. 
and uh, the growth on it is kind of long and spindly. And I don't think that would work if it's in a ball, when it's not traveling flat across something, because I imagine that the new growth that comes up would come up and I'll be pointing upwards, and I think it would probably really bother me. But maybe uh, just, you know, for the sake of experimentation, I could try to just maybe put some chunks of moss inside some of these. Here's an example right here. See how that's kind of long and lanky a little bit, and it does tend to reach for the light. But, you know, there was this bigger tub sitting on top of this from like right here, just for one night. It's the next morning from when I set this up on the table. And just from that one night, it's moving in that direction. So if this isn't a ball, then it's possible that all that new growth that comes up is going to grow kind of wonky. It's going to come up all around the sides instead of staying nice and even. Essentially what I'm saying is I'm not really convinced that this would be the appropriate moss to use for a Coco Dema. I'll go ahead and put just like a single piece of it up along the sides of one of my terrariums in inside. That was hard to say for some reason. Give it a few days and see what happens with it and see if that growth does go up and kind of weird. Or maybe I could just make just like a moss ball and see what that does. That's kind of neither here nor there. You know, I like to go through the thought processes with a lot of what I do just because I think sometimes it makes it easier for people to, well, one, understand the rhyme and reason behind what I do and uh, make your own decisions based off of what I do, what works and what doesn't work. If it doesn't work, I'll still show it. Yeah, that's how we all learn and figure things out. Okay, so now the soil has had quite a long time to soak. I did end up adding in just some standard all-purpose potting mix because that mix I had was way too gritty. Everything was just falling apart, so this is clearly more clumpy. It will hold better. And now I'm just gonna form it into a ball. These syngoniums that I'm using here, these are the Super Dwarf Pixies. They're basically still in their plug. They were potted up in these. This is what they shipped in, but that's how much rooting they had done in there, so testament to that seller, I suppose. Not not a lot of root growth out of this. Typically with Coco Dema, you would take your soil and make a ball and it would be really firm and get it nice and firm. Then you split it in half and then you tuck your new plant in the middle and then you form the ball back around it. With this still basically, like there's some new growth coming out here that you can see, but with this still essentially being in the shape of the plug, I'm gonna go ahead and just form the ball around it right from the get go. That's not something you would typically do because you can risk with all that pressure you, you have to apply there, kind of compacting the roots and doing a little bit of damage, but there's not a lot of damage to be done here, as you can see. So it should be just fine. And I've done that before with other ones, other syngoniums that I've gotten that were like this and just other plants in general, I've gotten like this with the exception of ferns and uh, there were no issues. The ferns, I'm always more cautious with because their roots can be more delicate ferns in general you know they're kind of divas with those i'm more careful but with, with this i'm just going to lift up the soil in my hands and squeeze some of that water out and then uh, pop this guy in the middle and gently form this ball around it and then start moving on to wrapping it up in moss yeah see it's little and it's cute i intentionally made this one pretty small you'll see why when i get this put up together i also need to mention i swapped my moss out the moss I used in the beginning um, is mood moss, which I just, I had two different packages of moss sitting around and I wasn't paying attention. Mood moss is very long and stringy, as you can see here. I need to be careful, that's fragile. Mood moss is sort of long and spindly, whereas just regular sheet moss that you would use is flat. So if someone decided to use mood moss for coco de ma you absolutely can do that but let me show you what it's going to look like i went ahead and just mocked it together so i could give an example of the air of my ways yeah there's a little kind of rough example of how that's going to end up looking if you like this there's nothing wrong with that but it's going to have much more of a wild appearance to it and then all of these pieces of moss that stick out here those are going to dry much more quickly and kind of crisp up and the mood moss turns brown a lot faster I've noticed than just the regular sheet moss. It's preserved, it's not going to come back to life. There have been like rare occasions when I put this in a terrarium and then like maybe six months later, I'll start to actually see some new growth come out of the mood moss. And that's just from spores that ended up staying in the packaging with everything that didn't end up dying off during the preservation process, that, that just happens. Or even some other type of moss that made its way in and started growing within it. This just, it's, you can see, it's not really desirable. Unless you're into this, in which case, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. I'm switching back over here to just using the regular sheet moss. The only issue I have with this sheet moss is that the, particularly the package I bought really 
it just, it's mostly just lots and lots of clumps. If you can find your mood moss, look in that, or not mood moss, just your sheet moss, look in that package carefully, and you can usually kind of see uh, how clumpy it's going to be. Having this in big pieces is really helpful for this process because you have to get this wrapped around that teeny tiny little root ball and having lots and lots of little pieces makes it a lot harder to, I mean, you're about to see it, you're about to witness it. It's probably going to be a nightmare. I'm gonna go ahead through and try and find the biggest pieces that I can and uh, just, we'll just keep our fingers crossed because using like little chunks like this, they're fine for packing into gaps, but doing the entire thing in those little pieces, that's going to be extremely difficult. Well, this is what isn't going to work. I mean, it could work. Potentially, but you can see it's a lot of just scraps. It wasn't that package of moss I got wasn't the best quality. But over here on my little tray or Rubbermaid container thing lid, I'm just gonna go for it, but all these little pieces are typically much more difficult to work with with the terrariums, but that's the hey, hate, that's okay. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, it's just when you have so many little pieces like I did, you have to use a lot of twine. If you can get nice big chunks with your moss, that kind of hurt right into my finger, then uh, you don't have to use as much twine. And it's going to look a little bit more clean and tidy. Some people like the look of the twine. Again, when you have larger pieces to work with, with the twine, there's a lot of stabby needles in this moss. Sometimes when you have lots of little pieces of moss, you don't have as much uh, opportunity to be artistic with your twine. You have to wrap it everywhere where it might fall apart. So not the prettiest twining job I've ever done, but it will do. If there were larger pieces of moss, then that would have been an easier thing to work with. But the moss I bought wasn't the best quality, and so it was just lots of little pieces, as you saw. It is a good idea. You want to wring that out before you start wrapping it. I didn't wring this as much as I normally would, just because, I mean, look, it's just it's falling to pieces. So I didn't want to break it even more than it already was. So I just kind of figured I'll just let it sit on something for a little while and kind of drip out. <laughs> That'll just have to do for now. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to let this drip out for a little bit. I have one more of these I want to do because I have two different containers. And I was going to do it with this Syngonium Neon Robusta here because, I mean, look, it's just, it's beautiful. Not that you could tell from that chaotic close-up. But I don't think I'm going to use this just because things have been really Syngonium heavy over here lately. I would really like to do one of these with an asparagus fern, the plumosa type. I don't have any. So uh, because this moss sucks so incredibly much and i would really like to use one of those ferns i actually think i'm gonna run out and i'll vlog it it'll be in this weekend's vlog and it come you, you don't need to know any of this I'll, hopefully i'll be back with new moss and a better fern uh, i've had this one sitting here on top of this little inverted pot doing some dripping and i ran out to the nurseries to try and find an asparagus fern and uh no asparagus ferns but some other things happened oops it just you yeah, know is what it is there were things that i needed for the terrarium so it's okay maybe a little mini african violet i know i just said that i have too many syngoniums but this one looks like it might be one of the confettis which i've had trouble getting a hold of so i went ahead and i got it it's kind of hard to tell when they're... that doesn't matter so instead of using an asparagus fern for what i wanted to do next i'll just use this little parlor palm here that'll work the only reason i got this they had other ones that actually looked a little bit better but it had this really stupid root coming it'll do the job it's fine it's got the right growth habit to it so it's going to work and i also picked up moss i grabbed two different kinds really just so i can show you what the different ones are with the sheet moss so this right here these are both from super moss they're pretty good moss so this one right here is actually on a sheet which i'll show you as soon as i open it up and this one right here isn't i'll probably use this one you'll see why so you can see here this one that's already on a sheet what i mean by that is they have actually adhered it to a mat which is really useful in a lot of ways but as far as being able to wrap it around something to make a nice ball not really see you get these weird kind of edges and corners with it so unless you're doing something with smooth sides that's not as easy to work with but i picked it up because i'm going to need it for something else <laughs> so i was glad to get a hold of that but this is what i actually need here okay and i can already tell like just from having a little bit of a look at this this is already much better look it's an actual sheet 
It's not just little pieces. Once this rehydrates, it probably won't necessarily be that way, but it's at least larger pieces than what I was working with before. So that's good. I will say the coloration, the dye on there, a little bit intense for my liking, but that's okay. Pour some water in there and let this soak for a little while. And I have to push it down. Sometimes when these want to float a lot, I'll put like a heavy pot or something on top to help hold it down. But usually if you just give it a little bit of a push, that'll do the trick. So while I had the moss soaking, I went ahead and popped this into a little soil ball here. I didn't really see a reason to show that since, you yeah, know, it just happened. You've seen it. But now I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. For some reason, the soil blend is a little bit more chunky and kind of falling apart more than the previous one that I did. Actually, I've done two others, but I only filmed one because that's all that seemed necessary. But... Whatever that's about doesn't really matter because this moss will help hold that together. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this out. This is a much more sturdy sheet of moss than that other stuff. So I'm not really worried about it falling to pieces like the other things did. Very gently pick up my little palm tree ball here and just, you know, <laughs> you see how much better that is. It needs some work because it's gonna be all ruffly and weird when it's one giant piece like this. Yeah, this is just so, so, so much easier to work with. And there it is, really simple. Three different cocodemas. I made this one off camera. I, you'll see why I made that off center and point it to the side, but this is really a very easy thing to do. And you might be wondering, what about this is a terrarium thing? I got you, there was, there was a point behind this. There's always a reason behind the madness. I'll put some black rocks here on the bottom and that's just gonna lift them out of the water a little bit. Oh, and wouldn't wanna forget this one. I have two. This one's the same as the other one, but it's on a base. You see the base? Otherwise, these two are completely identical. Dema is beautiful. It always looks nice. It's really easy to do, but keeping them hydrated can sometimes be a pain. And uh, both of these plants that I'm using are plants that do like to be hydrated really, really well, particularly the Syngonium over here, the Podophyllum, the Nanthabella, this parlor palm that's up here. They don't like to dry out either, but they can handle it a little bit more. They're more forgiving. Whereas over here with the Syngoniums, these little super dwarf pixies or mini pixies, uh, they're not as forgiving. They'll bounce back from being dried out. Just, it, it's gonna take them some time. So while these aren't your traditional terrarium where you would have like a false bottom with your nice soil blend and that the whole point is that water can evaporate, get stuck to the sides, condense and come back down. It'll be transpired through the plants and everything. Still think that this should serve a pretty similar purpose. When I water these though, instead of putting water into this and having water sit in the bottom, I will more than likely actually take them out and water them the way you traditionally would with any cocodema, where you take the whole entire ball and just sort of gently dunk it into some water, give it, you know, I don't know, just a few seconds really to soak up that water and lift it back out. And then it will have this nice layer here where that some of that water, that excess can drain out. But the thinking is that having them in these apothecary jars should at least reduce how often that needs to be done. The Neanthabella, the parlor palm, they're not the fastest growers, so it should be able to stay in here for a pretty long time. And uh, like I had mentioned, I would have loved to have done an asparagus fern in there, one of the plumosa types, because they're toxic and not something I can usually keep in my house but if I could put it in the glass that would have been great and those you can prune those like crazy wood over time had I found that asparagus fern outgrown this but you just prune them back and they can take it no problem you can't do that with palms you can't just cut them back you'll kill the plant I'm okay with it because I like the palm trees and it, you, know, you can see a definite difference here in the mosses right the one that was the one from super moss and then the ashland moss that was very chunky and then many many pieces over here Still looks nice, but uh, it's just, it's a whole different vibe between the two. So this moss right here, that's a lot of reflection. That does look more messy, obviously, but it also looks a little bit more natural because this over here is just, it's kind of like a neon green and you can do these with live moss. I'm just not going to, I'll throw a scrap of moss in one of these to see how it does with the directional growth like I talked about in the beginning. The whole point here was just that this should extend how much time goes between watering. If making the cocodema is not your thing, then there are other options. You can always cheat. You can buy this, one of these little balls right here, they come with a hanger like so, and you can just plop something in there. Drop your plant of choice in there. You should probably pot it up in there, not just set that in there, but it's going to give you a very similar aesthetic and save a lot of time. 
but I think it's kind of fun actually doing this and wrapping the twine around it. If you're really artsy, then you can probably do much better with the twine than I did. Like I said, if you end up using moss where it's lots and lots of little tiny pieces, it's a little bit more difficult to have a nice looking wrap with the twine on there. You kind of just have to go every different direction to help hold that stuff down, which is fine. It's okay. The jute twine over time, it starts to fade an awful lot and it won't be anywhere near as noticeable. You don't have to use twine either. You can use some other material. Actually would have liked to use some sort of clear string, like fishing line essentially, but that stuff's really hard to tie. And I'm out of it right now. But if I were to use fishing line, I would take a piece of it, tie it to like a stick or something that's easier for me to hold with one hand with some excess hanging out and then pin that piece down that has that twig tied to it or like a bead or something, wrap it up with the fishing line and then the, I would tie it off to the excess that was hanging out trim it off and that's it. I'm okay with it. The jute twine's fine with me. I think it looks nice. But yeah, like I said, the care for these is going to be a little bit different than that of the other terrariums I've been doing because this isn't something where you can just go ahead and put some water in there and then it will reuse itself in a closed terrarium setting or semi-closed terrarium setting. These lids are kind of loose to call it a closed terrarium but it's essentially the same thing just some evaporation will happen for all i know maybe it will work out that way i don't know i can't say for sure because i haven't put the coco de Maz actually in a closed jar before usually you know you just have them sitting in a bowl or something like that this uh, i don't know it should be interesting these little syngoniums here the super dwarf or mini pixie it's not going to get much taller than this but they do like to spread so the idea here is that the syngonium will spread out to that edge kind of come over the front a little bit and around the back and it will kind of conform hopefully to the ball that's sitting above it ideally that's what should happen so i tried to leave the wrapping on top of this one a little bit more loose so it could have that freedom to spread this one i mean you watch me make it there were so many little pieces of moss that i couldn't leave the top quite as loose as i would have liked to it should be okay though i don't think that's going to be a problem because you can see there's still some loose tufts of moss over here where that should be able to spread out and do its thing these aren't going to get much taller than they already are so it's just gonna be more a matter of them kind of filling in and i had to kind of stop myself my eyes are always bigger than my planters At, for a while i was thinking it would be fun to do a traditional bottom here and plant like some cryptanthus and things around the edges i stopped myself though because the entire reason i wanted to do this that i wanted to do the cocodema in the terrarium was for simplicity i wanted things to look clean and uh, tranquil and green with just not a ton going on inside of them it's just like a little chunk of beautiful lush garden and that's it that's it for this terrarium tuesday last week uh pammy's plenty things pam's plenty things she did a terrarium tuesday i have that linked into the terrarium tuesday playlist so if you want to watch that check that out i did toy with the idea of actually putting some wicking cord letting that hang out the bottom of these and then run into that gravel and see if they would self-water you can get wicking cord for making things self-watering on like amazon it's not very expensive I and mean, it's like six bucks for maybe 30 feet and then i would have wrapped that around and kind of kept that in there with that soil ball before I prepared this and let the string hang out the bottom and then covered it with the rocks and then would have had a little water reservoir in here and then in theory it would have self-watered this cocodema. I don't know if it would actually work for sure because there's already going to be so much moisture in this with it being closed. That might be something to play around with and experiment with. It's something I'd like to try another time. It's a little late to get the wicking cord in there now. Yeah, that'll do it. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I have all my social media linked down below. I use Instagram more than anything else. It's probably the best place to find me and get a hold of me. And if you haven't already, you could like the video. It makes a big difference for the channel and I appreciate it. And subscribe as well and hit the notification bell. That way you know new videos come out. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well and everything's going great for you uh, comment down below say hi have you guys done coco dema before you ever tried them inside of a terrarium let me know tips tricks suggestions are always appreciated it's how we all learn together and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye